This is Calle Ocho, Southwest A Street, the beating heart of Miami's Little Havana. I grew up nearby and I had my first job on this street as a kid. Once a rough, low-income neighborhood, now Calle Ocho and the Cuban immigrants who arrived here are helping to power the biggest economic driver in Miami. A massive $18 billion tourism industry. We currently are receiving about 4 million visitors a year to this neighborhood. Wow. The first generation of Cuban immigrants fled political oppression and made their own fortunes here. My father, when he first got here, he was working as a busser at night. Then at 4 o'clock in the morning, he was on a boat fishing. He's a grinder. You know, he was a hustler, man. And the next generation are becoming global superstars, rising to the top of their industries and making millions along the way. So you produced and did all the music for all these? Yes. We have that Mark Anthony, Gloria Shakira, Jennifer Lopez, and we're still making music. I'm more busy than I've been in my whole life. I'm going back to Calle Ocho in Little Havana, the birthplace of my own American dream, to get an exclusive look that no tourist ever gets to see. Are you guys hiring? Because I want to I want to work here. Oh, I'll put you in the line let's right go, now. Let's do it. To find out just how this unique street and its homegrown entrepreneurs have helped transform an entire city. OK, we need a little more noise. This is Miami. Look closely. Every street in this country is powered by a dream. I'm Marcus Slimonis. I'm a CEO, I'm self-made, and I'm a champion of entrepreneurs. I'm gonna meet the hardworking women and men whose passion, drive, and determination fuels the business of America's most iconic streets. This is Streets of Dreams. This is Calle Ocho, the main drag of Miami's Little Havana. Home to the oldest Cuban population in the United States. Yes. <laughs> there are streets across America where a lot of money is made and a lot of dreams are made, but for me, Calle Ocho has a personal meaning. How are you, man? Good to see you, my man. Good to see you. Welcome to see you. How you doing? Good, good, How's good. business? I can't complain. Not only did I grow up in this area, but my first job was right here on this street. And for me to be able to go back and understand how a little street can evolve into something like this was an important story for me to tell. This is Southwest Street. This is Southwest Street. Right there. Yes. Yes, right here. 30 years ago, when you moved here, yep. what was here? Oh, my god. This was an empty piece of land with oak trees. What was here? Oak trees. What and was empty. here 10 years ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oak trees. I'm with Frank Mello, a tenacious real estate broker who's been instrumental in growing Little Havana's commercial real estate market. He's giving me an insider's look at commercial properties and how they're priced along Southwest A Street, also known as Calle Ocho. What's happened to the commercial real estate prices on 8th Street? I mean, they've exploded because truly what's happened is I recall about 15 years ago when I started, right here in front there was a bank and I'd come to this bank and all of a sudden we started to see an ingredient change. And it was that we started counting buses, tour buses. Um, and it was 15, then it was 20, then it was 30. Mm -hmm. So we said something's starting to change and we started to see more tourism. A Street stretches from the Everglades to the ocean's edge. Less than five miles from Miami International Airport, Calle Ocho is a 23-block stretch along A Street that borders downtown Miami's financial center, Brickell. Do you have any building listings of your, of your own? Uh, yes, I do. And what would that piece of land hopefully sell for? What's it listed for? True value on a development basis is around $5 million but to make it happen, or what the seller's expectations are, today are about seven. Just under an acre? Yes. For seven million dollars in Little Havana on A Street? Yes. Five years ago, what would that property have sold for? Two. 
So the explosion is that recent? Yes, we've seen it 300%. Not being here for 20 years, I was stunned by the numbers that I was being given. $7 million for an acre? An acre in the middle of this street. It's not on the water. It's not in New York City. It's not in downtown Los Angeles. It's on Calle Ocho. My question is, why are thousands of people from all over the world coming here to spend their money? The Calle Ocho that I remember was always filled with resilient people working as hard as they could to make their business thrive. But back then, those businesses weren't drawing people from all over the globe. I've come back to see what's changed and what hasn't on Calle Ocho. First, I'm going to talk with somebody who's had a front row seat in watching Calle Ocho's tourist explosion. Good morning. Hi. I'm Marcus. How are you? Good. Nice to meet you. Liz, you're having a little coffee this morning. How are you? Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Rosie Rizal is the editor of the Calle Ocho News, a local paper here. She's known for having her ear to the ground on the Cuban market, and she's uniquely positioned to observe all the fluctuations of the economy on this street. I think the most amazing thing is this may be one of the few streets in America where the old and the new can coexist. I grew up as a child on Lejeune and Southwest A Street, and this area for me means something different because you'd walk down here and it's changed a lot, kind of. Right, we still, we're still holding on to what, its originality. And I'd love to walk the street with you and have you point out things, right? Absolutely. You want to walk? Yeah. OK. My family's car dealership was on Calle Ocho. And so as a young kid growing up working summers and weekends, as a seven-year-old, eight-year-old, nine-year-old, washing cars, moving things, I was dealing with an influx of the Cuban-American population that surrounded my family's business and I became part of that community. What percentage of business on this street is local versus tourists? I would say that 85% of the business done on this street is tourists. Really? Yeah. Is that different from 10 years ago or the same? Different. Different because everything changed once ball and chain came into the picture. They played a role in having a lot of tour buses come stop in this area. The nightclub ball and chain reopened in 2014. Shortly after, buses started ferrying in sightseers. Tourists pour onto Calle Ocho every 15 minutes, all day and night. And all of those people come with money to spend. And they want to get out and they walk around and... Oh yeah, and they buy cigars and they buy guayaberas and they buy coffee. If they want to go out on a Friday night, they, will, they can come here and just be in like another world. Welcome to Miami. How are you? Have fun. How are you guys doing? Who is ever? Is this your first time to Little Havana? Love it. It's awesome. Have fun, guys. Over the last 15 years, the number of tourists traveling to Miami has more than doubled from 11 million to 24 million visitors. Each year, more and more of those visitors have made it a point to explore Little Havana. Since 2004, there has been a whopping 2,000% increase in foot traffic alone. But the Cubans have been here for over half a century. How did their culture become something so marketable? And what sparked this tourist boom? It sounds like that nightclub ball and chain played a key role in this transformation. So I wanted to talk to the guy who owns it. Though you may not have heard of him, Bill Fuller is a power player in this area. Everyone in Little Havana knows him. A risk-taking developer who's been betting on Calle Ocho for the past 20 years. Bill's agreed to show me around. It is crazy for me to be walking on 7th and see a brand. Is this a hotel? This is going to be a hotel. It's always been a historic hotel called the Tower Hotel. Yeah. But we're restoring it. It'll be the first hotel in the cultural district. Uh, it, we're about four months away from opening. What was your motivation? Because to be candid with you, there's lots of places to invest in real estate in Miami. You could be on the beach, you can be in the gables. Why did you pick Little Havana? For me, it made perfect sense. Let the Cuban heritage is part of who I am. Sure. And this idea of investing in the community and celebrating the best that we have, the culinary, the, uh, the entrepreneurs, the dance, the music, everything about this is all encompassing this investment. It's a vertical integration. But you also knew that it would be a great real estate investment. 